Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. I don't think I have to go over why I love this. This is the Jolt. The Jolt is one of the greatest blasters that have ever been created exclusively because it is tiny and it works. It's a grip with a barrel on top of it, a T-pull, you load in a dart, you pull it down and you pull the trigger to fire. It is super obvious, super simple, idiot proof, and you can do some various mods with it, but mainly because of its size and compact nature and the ability to just work so flawlessly, the Jolt is fantastic and has become a staple in the Nerf hobby since its original release in the end strike series when this came out it basically destroyed all competition with it the secret strike was flawed because the air tank could explode and the reflex is flawed because it's so much bigger than the jolt this blaster is just an improvement and as you've noticed over the past couple years, Dart Zone has had a habit of trying to one-up Hasbro with their offerings because I'm pretty sure Dart Zone is self-aware at how bad Hasbro's become and took this as an opportunity to try and step in and be the better brand. Has that happened? Well, that's for a different video to make. And I have my own opinions on Dart Zone versus Hasbro and stuff like that, but it doesn't really matter. Dart Zone's made a few releases that have seemingly tried to compete with nerfs. You see the Titan CS50? They made the V-Twin. You see the Alpha Trooper? They made the Pyroraptor. You see the Strife? They made the Spectrum, and then they made the Thunderbolt. These blasters are decent competition, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that these blasters really could replace the originals. Except for the, uh, the V-Twin and the Titan CS50. Mainly because the Titan CS50 absolutely sucks and the V-Twin's relatively good, but that's besides the point. These blasters are staples in the hobby, and they have been for years, and they can't really be replaced. The same goes for the Jolt. There really isn't any way for Dart Zone to replace one of Hasbro's most iconic blasters, like the Strife, or the Strong Arm, or anything like that. Or can they? This is the solo and i have gotten hundreds of requests on discord and on youtube and through emails and stuff to take a look at this blaster and i was pretty skeptical about it at first and i am here to say comfortably as much as i despise saying this word this is a jolt killer by all definition and i'm going to explain why i think that is today <laughs> But today I want to talk about the box before I actually get into the blaster because the way that this thing's advertised is similar to getting something like an iPhone or like a GAN Rubik's Cube. It is an insanely good packaging. It comes in this really nice looking premium beautiful sleeve that you open up and the blaster's just revealed along with 10 darts. I can't find the 10th one so I just put an ember dart in it. But it is just amazing the way that this thing fits and like the, the way that the box is set up. It's real thick and it just feels nice and it's just, this is how you make a premium blaster. This thing feels like, it feels like you're unboxing an Apple product. Like it genuinely is a very nice unboxing experience until the T-pull randomly gets stuck inside the box for no reason. You have to pull it out like that. There we go. I finally got it out. And then you just take the darts out. But the unboxing of this blaster should honestly set the scene for where this review is going. So let's start with the design of this blaster by opening it up and revealing everything that it has to offer. It looks like a jolt. It really does. The only thing that it's missing is the trigger guard. Other than the trigger guard, it is literally just a big jolt. Like if I put the jolt next to it, it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit chunkier, but it is a jolt by all things considered. And honestly, the proportions and size of this blaster are not much bigger than the jolt. It's still smaller than something like the reflex. And it's just about the same size as something like the secret strike. It is a small blaster, but it's big enough to actually have a little bit of profiling to it. And the details here are beautiful. It looks space age. It looks really cool. It's covered in racing stripes and I love the way that it looks. There's no paint on the blaster at all, not on either side. It is pretty much just a blue piece of plastic, an orange piece of plastic with dark gray details. And it works. It works very well. I think that the design concept of this blaster is a very good one and there's really nothing to complain about with the design. I do think that the Jolt looks a little bit better just because it has all of this little detailing in it that gives it tons of personality a lot of which the Solo lacks, but it's very utilitarian and it definitely has charm to it. The ergonomics of this blaster are very similar. The blaster consists of just a main grip because it's a small pistol, but unlike the Jolt, this is an absolutely fantastic grip 
constantly everywhere. This grip is really, really good. It's a really good size and it makes up the majority of the blaster size, but it provides a very comfortable, very smooth ergonomic handhold that you can close your hand around very nicely. The only complaint that I have with the grip has nothing to do with the grip itself. It is just this tiny kind of flat edge on the front of it, which is mandatory so that the shell can do that and I will address that more in just a moment but I do think that the grip is really really good and as for the trigger I thought this was going to be bad because it's so tiny looking but it actually works pretty well because the grip has so much volume to it your finger just kind of lines up with the trigger and it just kind of works so you'd probably expect this blaster to function just like the jolt where you put a dart into the front you pull the t pull down and you fire you can do it like that, but what you're meant to do is this. You have this lever on top. If you pull it, the barrel breaks down and connects with the bottom, which exposes the barrel. You take a half dart and push it into the back like this before you push this tiny button and close up the barrel, creating a seal. Then you have a T-pull. You pull this down, you aim, and you fire it. And it shoots extremely hard, like HVZ numbers. The advertised FPS out of this is about 120, but I've found it to hit somewhere closer to 130 to 140 if you get a good seal on it. That's insane because the blaster is this big. It's, a, it's competing with the Jolt. It's this big and it is hitting 120 at the very least out of the box. That's record breaking. The mechanism here also allows you to use full length darts and just front load them like you would with the original Jolt and still be able to get terrifying FPS numbers out of it. It's not quite as good as when you rear load a half dart into the back, but you can still get absurdly good performance out of this thing that rivals other pro blasters and rivals numbers that you would see on competition level blasters. It's actually insane how good the mechanism is here. And truthfully, the mechanism is good. Every single spring-loaded component here feels nice. This lever has really nice ridges on it to be able to easily pull it down with your thumb. It is at the perfect size to where you can just pull it down with your thumb. The front of the barrel is weighted enough to where if you pull it down like this, it just clicks down and it doesn't spring load back. Loading the dart in is super smooth and it's just a tight, comfortable fit. This little button here is perfect for you to just push with your middle finger. And because the barrel is weighted, you can flip it up like that and it just works. Priming the blaster is buttery smooth and feels 10 billion times better than the Jolt. And the trigger pull is just as snappy as the Jolt, minus the plastic spring, which makes it perfect. Gosh, this blaster rocks. Everything about this is super satisfying and super nicely done. I didn't think this thing was going to work because of the folding barrel and I thought it was just going to be gimmicky, but damn, this thing has blown my expectations away. It even has a safety. You don't have to safety it, but you can. It's another thing that you can do even if you don't really want to. Three front loading. There are a good chunk of blasters that will always pretty much be irreplaceable. The Strife is one of them. The Strife is perfect in pretty much every way. Stock, it has improvements that it could be made, but once you modify it, you can literally just make it perfect. There's no thing, there's nothing to complain about with the Strife. And I thought that was the same with the Jolt. But this blaster made me realize how flawed the Jolt actually is. You can't really mod it all that much, and it just doesn't have that much to offer. This blaster has everything the Jolt has to offer, plus mod potential. 
The blaster is held together with screws like a traditional blaster. It isn't vacuum formed into one spot. Which means that you can open this blaster, take out the spring, and exchange the springs, add air restrictors if you want to do, take out air restrictors. There's no air restrictors in this thing. You don't need to mod it, but you can. You can add another brass barrel, even though, nope, it's already got one. It is a blaster that you can do whatever you want with, just like the Strife. This is the Jolt version of the Strife. Out of the box, it comes in a fantastic, overly usable condition, and when you add mod potential into the mix, which this blaster has a ton of, the possibilities are endless. You could get, you could make this do anything. Because it has a built-in brake barrel action, you could put like a big long barrel and put a big chunky ass spring in there and make it shoot like a hundred million bajillion FPS. And it's this small. I hate saying that a blaster is a blank killer, especially when it comes to the Jolt, because the Jolt is a tried and true blaster that everybody will always remember, and always there will be reasons to have this blaster. Except, I just don't see a reason to get a Jolt anymore. If you have the ability to get a solo, this blaster is so much better than the Jolt in every possible stretch of the imagination. Even when it comes to modding, the blaster's better. There's more mod potential to be had with the Solo than the Jolt ever had to begin with. The Jolt is extremely hard to mod, and even if you do manage to mod it, you are very limited with what you can do with it. It pretty much just comes down to taking the air restrictors out and being able to give it a bit of a heavier spring load. But with this blaster, you have the modular, the modular ability of the Strife in the size of a Jolt as a Springer. That's insanity. The solo is so good that I don't know where to start and where to end. You can ignore all the gimmicks and things that this adds and just use it as a jolt, and it still is better than the jolt because it feels better, works better, is smoother, and hits 120 out of the box. It's fantastic. The solo is a fantastic little blaster, and I give this the absolute highest recommendation I possibly can. But just remember, Never forget the Jolt, because this blaster is absolutely amazing, and without the Jolt, we wouldn't even be here. Thank you for watching. Bye.